Welcome in, everybody. It is Friday, September 16th. TGIF, everybody. We'll get through this day together somehow. Today, this is your Daily Dog Take. I am Jacob at Roaches and 13, joined again by the wonderful co-hosts of a Jets Way podcast. Why was that so hard to say? But apparently it was. Lorenzo, Jake, and Sean. Guys, how are you doing today? Doing well, man. I mean, it's Friday. It's a beautiful day. It's it's always nice when the weekend approaches. It's always a good week, and then it just gets ruined on Sundays, usually, as a Jets fan. So <laughs> it is what it is. But happy to be here with you, as always. It's week two, uh, and only one of us can win. But, hey, hopefully it's a good game. I, I, I'll, I'll make my trip up there for the first time this year. Um, I was up there a couple times for training camp, so... I'm headed up there. Uh, my dad didn't get to go up last year, so he's uh, back to go up this year. So we're pretty excited about getting an opportunity to go up there and see, uh, you know, Ohio State's own Garrett Wilson on the field again because I've never seen him in person. So like I've never, so I'm pretty excited to to check that out, guys. We did a preview of the Jets' offense yesterday. You can check it out uh, over on YouTube or on any of the audio platforms if you're watching us on Twitter. I will put a link to our amazing sponsors at Homage. Get yourself set up with the best Browns gear. Um, and like TV shows and calves. I mean, they are working on a Donovan Mitchell shirt right now. So you can go get some of that stuff. And uh, Donovan Mitchell introduced on Wednesday, uh, came to town wearing a Brownie the Elf hat. And I just like the get us meter was off the chart, right? So we will talk about the Jets defense here uh, today and kind of what the Jets need to do to contain the Browns. Like it's not a great feat. It's not going to be that hard. Trust me. Uh, at least in the passing game anyway. The offense uh, running attack is is pretty successful. The offensive line's not bad. So, guys, let's start overall. We did this yesterday with the offense. We'll go uh, around the clock starting with Lorenzo as we did yesterday. Um, talk about talk to me about the Jets' defense overall uh, after one week. Man, I, I think they they really impressed us last week. Uh, there were some, some broken coverages and, and broken plays, obviously, um, but we held the the Ravens, who are the one of the best rushing teams in the NFL for the past couple of years with Lamar Jackson, and we held them to um, 62 yards. Um, if there was any other quarterback playing on Sunday, we probably would have had more sacks. Um, so I think the 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 main, I guess the main point of the the, the Jets defense is definitely their their front their front four specifically. Uh, let me tell you something: the Jets defense is ready to play football this year. The offense, I'm not too quite sure about, but. I the starting point with the Jets defense is obviously their pass rush. Getting Carl Lawson back after missing all of last year is giving them a big boost. Jermaine Johnson had a sack on Sunday, the first round pick out of Florida State. Uh, Sheldon Rankins is a run stopper. And just the two corners that the Jets deploy, I think the cornerback depth chart is probably their best as from a starting standpoint because after the first three, which are Sauce Gardner, the fourth overall pick, DJ Reed, a free agent acquisition from Seattle, and Michael Carter the second, who is a six-round pick, a, a rare late-round gem by the New York Jets as our slot corner. Very, very good football player. And then it gets a little bit dicey with Bryce Hall, who, in my opinion, should be a healthy scratch on Sunday. He is awful. And the two safeties, not very good. Jer Jordan Whitehead will be missing the game on Sunday, and, and LaMarcus Joyner should just retire right now. He has nothing left in the tank. So um, I'm looking forward to it. And – the, if the Jets' defense just plays, shuts down the run game, I think we'll be more than fine in the pass game. But it's really the scoring points aspect that I think the Jets will struggle at on Sunday. <laughs> Definitely. This this was a defense that was the, the bottom of the league last year, just very little talent. We had injuries to Carl Lawson, just just not good. But the, the biggest thing for the defense, I would say, is uh, just the, the new additions in the – cornerback room. So I Garner taking four overall. Looks very good. DJ Reed sliding into the uh, CB2 spot. He also looks very good. So if they could manage to shut down the run a little bit, because I know that's going to be pretty damn hard to do, then they'll make it very hard to throw the ball. Yeah, there was, uh, interestingly, interestingly enough, uh, Joel B Batonio struggled a little bit last week against the Panthers. Uh, a little bit more physical on the inside. So, I mean, there's there's the opportunity in the middle of that with uh, Ethan Pochich, the former uh, second-round pick of the Seahaw Seahawks, starting at center after Nick Harris goes down. So there's some opportunities, I think, for Sheldon Rankins on the inside to kind of be disruptive and kind of create 
you know, they'll probably run a lot more of the wide zone and gap schemes to try to counter that. Uh, but there's some opportunities along that Browns line. It's a very good line, but I said this last week, uh, leading into it, I do, I do not expect Jack Conklin to start again on Sunday. I did not expect him to start last week and he didn't. It was weird for me when Chris Hubbard also didn't start at right tackle and it ended up being, you know, second year player from Cincinnati, uh, James Hudson who actually had one of the better games on the offensive line outside of Wyatt Teller last week. So it was actually interesting there. So I think there's some opportunities for this uh, Jets defensive line where I think there is talent. I like Jermaine Johnson a lot. Um, I wanted Carl Lawson before they got Jadavian Clowney uh, last year. I was hoping to pair him with Miles Garrett. So, I mean, there's some – there's some worries. There's some issues and technique problems with Jed at left tackle. So I think there's some opportunities. And, you know, we talked about this yesterday with Flacco, but Brissett's not all that much more mobile. I mean, there was some openings where he got three yards, you know, like, so there's definitely a position here where he's not, I don't think he may makes a lot of decisive decisions unless it's a quick drop. So if he sets up, there's some opportunities, I think, for for the pass rushers in New York to you know, upset. Uh, you know, I thought last week with the Panthers, it was just kind of Brian Burns and some other dudes. I think the Jets have more dudes than that, and so I think it it can definitely go from there. So, you know, when you guys look at this from a defensive standpoint, we're talking about Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt and the kind of different ways they deploy it. Uh, they ran like 11 or 12 snaps with both of them on the field, uh, including a few snaps with Kareem Hunt as the fullback, which was <laughs> interesting. That dude will get that dude is meaner than you think he is. Like a uh, Kareem Hunt runs very angry. And, uh, and it was like one of those things where he ran a lot of that scat back stuff with the chiefs. And then he comes to Cleveland. And I was like, Oh, he's a, he's a, you know, it's this receiving back. No, dude's rude. He's disrespectful when he runs. He's like very, that kind of player. So if you're looking at that, if the jets are successful in slowing down that run, where's it going to come from? Is it Sheldon Rankins? Is it the linebackers? Like, where do you think in what fashion they try to slow this down? Um, I definitely think Quentin Williams has to have a, a productive day. He had a he had a really good week one um, as well. He had a, um, a couple of pressures, uh, but mostly was um, really good in the run game, especially. But I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm a little bit – our linebackers are okay. Um, I think the addition of Quan Alexander really helps us out, especially in coverage. But um, I'm, I'm always worried with this, with this Jets defense and – those third and long uh, situations where they, the running back gets a screen or the running back c catches pass out of the backfield. Those are the situations that um, I'm most worried about, um, especially. Yeah. If I'm Jeff Albrecht, Robert Sala, what I would do is literally dare Jacoby Brissett to throw the football. I would stack the box, send the kitchen sink. Literally my game plan would be, we are not going to get burned by Kareem Hunt or Nick Chubb. We are going to stop the run at all costs. If Jacoby Brissett, throws one over the top to one of these playmakers that are unproven because I believe Amari Cooper isn't expected to play. So no, he's, right, he's not expected he's, to play in practice today, excuse me. It was just rest. It was veteran rest. Oh, it was veteran rest. Okay, so even though Amari Cooper was out-targeted last week, what was it, 11-4 to 4 to Donovan Peoples-Jones? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, so um, I'm daring Jacoby Brissett to beat me if, if I'm Robert Sala. Yeah, I definitely agree with Jake. You have to slow the run down and make him – make make Brissett throw the ball like that's he's their backup quarterback you got a re really good one two punch at running back so stack the box and do all you can to slow them down running the ball there were so many opportunities for Jacoby Brissett to hit some just massive plays last week I mean you look at at the targets for Amari and in a couple of those go away because of penalties that were there uh, if you look at J.C. Horn, what he allowed, you would think he had a really good game, but he had a 49 coverage grade because Amari had him in a blender all day, and Jacoby couldn't hit him. He couldn't hit him. I mean, go look at – I think it's the first drive or maybe it's the second. And there was a touchdown to Amari just right there. I mean, he, he put Horn on the ground, and he was wide open, and I don't think Brissett hit any outbreaking routes all day. There was a lot of speed outs and five five to eight yard speed outs. He had a pretty good day in the 10 to 15s, but 
he was not hitting and Amari had a good game, but like he was, he was under throwing balls. He was, his timing was off. And you hope that that was just from a lack of kind of playing time with what with the Browns trying to get Watson back up to speed before his suspension and that sort of thing. Uh, but there's an opportunity there for those pass rushers and, and those corners, especially with sauce Gardner, who is, I love a run. The highest compliment I can give a defensive back is he's a dick and, and, and it frustrates people. And I think that's what sauce Gardner is. I think he's just like, he is everywhere. And these Browns, outside of Donovan people's Jones, these Browns wide receivers, they can struggle with corners that can get physical. And so if you can get physical with these wide receivers, I think the Browns are going to probably struggle um, because you saw that on Sunday. And I just, I, don't, I wish Jacoby Brissett was better. He's a, he's a backup man. Like, but here we are after one week and I'm sitting here telling you guys like, man, I really wish this quarterback was better because I would love to like, when people are like, Oh, you know, I want you to look at some of Br Brissett's tape. And it's like, you, you love to push back. Well, yeah, actually he was better. No, he wasn't. He was as bad as what you think he was, even if you didn't watch a single snap. Um, so I'm really, okay. <laughs> Yeah, he. That's Something we can't relate to. <laughs> yeah, and and that's the thing. It's like these wide receivers are open. Like Stefanski does a good job in scheming some less than stellar talent at wide receiver. Because I mean, you got Amari Cooper and a bunch of dudes, right? And I like a lot of these dudes, but the only one that can get vertical has a little bit of a hands problem right now, and Anthony Schwartz. And so I don't know that they'll. These corners, I just, I just don't know if you can get vertical on them easily uh, with, with the way that Brissett has struggled with uh, his deep ball. And, and all I mean is that they're going to have to burn the jet corners to be open enough for Brissett to hit them. Is what it feels like at, at times with some of his struggles. All right, guys, we'll go around here as we kind of, you know, wind up this talk of the Jets' defense. Um, so we kind of talked about the corners and the safeties and the linebackers kind of the hit them all along a little bit here and there for all the individual position groups and that sort of thing. If the jets win on Sunday defensively, is it because they force turnovers? Do they need to force turnovers because of the offensive lack of explosiveness, which is what the Browns, I said it for last week and it'll be the same for the Browns. As long as Brissett is at quarterback, the Browns have got to not turn the ball over and force turnovers to have a shot. Is that kind of the recipe for the Jets? Are they going to have to try to, you know, create some strip sacks and some interceptions, that sort of thing, because of the offense? Is it, is it all on the Jets' defense like it often is with the Browns? Yeah, I mean, with this Jets' defense, I mean, we had an interception last week. Uh, we, we forced a fumble as well, but uh, didn't recover. It's – of our history, we, we haven't really had a defense that have, has created turnovers, unfortunately, for us. But um, if we can somehow, you know – get a strip sack and, and especially in, in, in their side of the field. Um, I think that'll set up our offense, at least score points or, or, you know, definitely take advantage of, of those turnovers. But if we're being honest, I think the most we'll get is a couple sacks, but I, I don't see many. Um, we haven't had many games where we've, you know, create uh, uh, forced multiple turnovers. Yeah. We talked about it last week on the podcast. I can't remember the last time the jets have won the turnover battle. That's how, scarce turnovers have been last year i think we went like the first 10 weeks of the year without an interception by a defensive back but obviously we upgraded the talent an immense amount from last season and if the jets do win this game i think they will have to force at least a turnover or two and that goes back to what i was telling you before i think i would force jacoby Brissett to throw and i think if you can hit the quarterback and really hurry him i think he'll throw you a couple and you can disagree or agree with that assessment um if you'd like but um you know, if the Jets are keeping, if the game script is going the Jets' way and they're hitting the quarterback, then they'll they'll get a couple, and I think they'll be able to compete in this football game. I would definitely say we need some turnovers to win. Just just going based off last week, the Browns, well coached game, and they they won the game against a pretty decent Panthers team. And the Jets' offense did not look good last week against the Ravens. Hopefully, they have a different game plan. But I think we'll probably need a couple turnovers to win. I think I think last year, last week, Jacoby only had two turnover worthy throws because he will not take those chances. Um, and but there, without the one, 
I don't know how he didn't throw an interception last week. I mean, we talk about it being a clean game from Brissett and that being really the only reason I somewhat liked what he did, but he does – he does hold that ball out there sometimes. He's a bigger dude when you go to sack him, but if he is scrambling, that ball is out there and it is it is knock it's easily knocked away, I think. It I don't remember him fumbling last week. He doesn't he just doesn't take chances, but you can definitely get to him. Uh it's, it's one of the weirdest things ever because it's like it's not because of an immense amount of talent that he doesn't throw interceptions. It's the same thing as Tyrod Tyra Taylor. I mean, he, he's just not going to, he's just not going to throw it if he thinks he's going to throw an interception, but he might hold onto the ball and create, because he created a lot of pressure for himself last week. I think he had nine pressures overall. And I think it was like five of them were, were quarterback created pressures where he kind of held onto the ball or he ran around and he just was so indecisive with the ball last week that if you can provide a consistent pass rush, I think you've got an opportunity to put one or two of them on the ground and, and recover them. And I think that's a really worrisome thing for me when it comes to a pass rusher push pass rush duo that I think is as talented as what the jets have. Uh, so let's go around, man. Let's get, let's start with you, Lorenzo. Give us, give us the, give us the, the prediction for Sunday. Um, I think it'll definitely be a low scoring game. If we're being honest, I think the jets have a chance to at least contain, um, you know, that, that running attack. I don't think Jacoby Brissett is going to necessarily, you know, throw for 400 yards, or at least I hope he doesn't, but, um, yeah, I think it'll be a low scoring game and I think it's going to come down to a field goal either way. Yeah, I think the, the Jets will turn to Mike White, bold prediction on Sunday. I, I know we didn't really talk about it in the offensive show, but I think the Jets' offense will look so anemic because what can really change from week one, in my opinion? You know, the, the Jets can say all the coach speak they want. They can say this, that, and the other thing. But I think eventually they will be forced to go to Mike White to create, create a little bit of a spark, someone that can move the pocket, as I talked about uh, on the other podcast. So I think at some point on Sunday we see Mike White. Yeah, I think we're in for a low-scoring game here. And one thing to note that we didn't touch on is the Jets' special teams last week were horrid. Terrible kicking, terrible punting. I think it'll be low-scoring and probably down to a field goal, like Lorenzo said. I, I can live – I can finally live with field goal games because in one game, I'm already ready to crown Cade York as the greatest kicker of all time. Must be nice. <laughs> We've had a kicker in a long time. We have, I think it was, it would spin since Phil Dawson. I think Phil left in like 13 or 14, 2013, 2014 was when he went down to San Francisco, somewhere around when Johnny Manziel yeah, you, was drafted. You guys had the double doink on the team not too long ago, right? Mm, Parky. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we did some doink. Right. We've had quite the cast of characters yeah. on all facets of the team, not just kicker. I, I, I still think it's funny because a lot of, you know, the Browns go and they draft a, punt, a kicker in the fourth round. And there was a lot of like, oh, you drafted a kicker in the fourth round. Then he makes a 58 yard field goal to win the game in week one. And it snaps an 18 year week one losing streak that the Browns had back to 2004. So I f will say, though, you bring up special teams and we didn't talk about it. The punt return team, if, if Demetric Felton returns punts again, he muffed one officially last week, and he almost muffed two other ones. So there's an opportunity. If you're looking for, like, a game-changing play on a punt, just – just because he won't – that dude will not fair catch it. He does not really? get his shit. Well, let me tell you this about the Jets punter. <laughs> that requires the Jets punter kicking the ball over 20 yards and inbounds because last week he was shanking punts left and right because he is abysmal. And the only reason why he's still on the team is because he was a six-round draft pick. Ooh, I wanted Donovan Peoples-Jones in that draft, by the way, who the Browns drafted when we're taking punters and backup quarterbacks so with no offense. You know, it's it's been I, – I can say that I, – I, like, try not to – like my buddy is a, is a New York giants fan. And uh, you know, for so long it's, it was like Eli was successful and the Browns were just awful. And then when it got put on the other foot, like, and of course Cleveland has one successful season really in, in with Stefanski. And I was like, man, I am obnoxious because you win like one game and you're all of a sudden like, Hey, let's, let's, let's talk about all this crap. Yeah, we were a game away from the super bowl back to back years. Yeah. I, 
you know all the pain i don't i was, <laughs> I can. I don't want to tell you what the Browns were doing at that time. <laughs> anyway, guys, I, I greatly appreciate you guys. I'll get you, let you guys tell everybody where they can find all you guys' stuff before we sign off. Yeah, so you can follow us on Twitter at Jets White Podcast. We always interact with the fans, and we love friendly banter. I've had quite a couple of viral tweets with the dysfunction and the never-ending cycle of storylines with the New York Jets. You can find our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, it's always a good time. Have a good amount of good guests on. And uh, hopefully this year we talk about the season and we don't start talking about the draft in uh, October during Columbus Day. <laughs> I've been there because uh, I'm a big draft guy. And, and people are like, why are you the big draft guy? And I'm like, because it's all I got, man. Yeah, it's the Super Bowl <laughs> for us. When, when the season's over by Columbus Day every single year. <laughs> so I, I yeah. was like <laughs> last year that Monday night, game against Pittsburgh uh, where Baker sacked uh, 37 times or whatever it was. I released a mock draft at halftime. I was like, you know <laughs> what? At I halftime? Know, at halftime. I we, said that son of a What was that? Time. Like week what? 12? Uh, it was like four. It was, it was, um, I think it was like 14 or 15. Like well, it was. We released mock drafts in like yeah. week five. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, and I'm not joking either. Yeah. Or sometimes I release them in like week two. We'll think, we'll think about it. Guys, I greatly appreciate all your time uh, tonight and uh, for the last couple of days going over this stuff with me. And I'm, I, I really appreciate your insight. And I'm looking forward to a good game on Sunday. And, uh, guys, I'll talk to you guys all next time. And uh, we'll see you Saturday for NFL Week 2 picks. So, as always, go Browns.